Today I'm working in the workshop and I've discovered that my attic stairs are in dire need of some repairs. I'm going to show you what's going on, but basically we're going to replace this piece of wood that you see when the attic stairs are closed. That piece of wood is also structural because it's what the hinge bolts do for the stairs. So if that were to break loose, which is what mine is doing, then the entire thing would collapse down. And of course we don't want that. A little too old for that kind of a ride. So, we're going to get that fixed. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get this thing safe. So, this is what we're looking at right here. The wood is delaminating. Not only is it delaminating, but that center one right there is broken completely loose. And it's just coming apart right here and a lot of that is due to the moisture from my vent free heater that was in here for a few years also that hinge is becoming frozen I've sprayed it with a little bit of uh, penetrating oil and we'll see if it doesn't free up but right now what I want to do is just pull this whole thing down but I'm gonna leave the stairs themselves in place I'll show you how I'm gonna do that so what I have up here is an attic door insulation cover kind of like a tent it's got it sealed off pretty good that way I can get this down it's the weekend after Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving everybody hope you had a great one a lot of family and friends and enjoyed yourself got a full belly like I did so I want to set this two by four across here like this get it kind of directly over this step. Now I'm not expecting this to hold my weight. I just want it to hold the stairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this through. And the reason I wanna leave the stairs in place is because there's just so many rivets. These, these supports are riveted to the structure, they're riveted to the step. I could drill them out and put bolts in their place, but it's not something I really want to do. I would just rather leave it as factory as possible. So I'll just leave these in place and take the wood off of them. The wood is also riveted and I will be putting bolts back in the place of that. So I just tied a loop in this real quick. And I'm going to use that loop just to tighten it up real nice and tight I'll get that right in the middle and then I'm just going to go around it a few times you know what I think I'm just going to tie it off right here first and then cycle over it a few times and tie it again I was going to throw a coat of paint on that wood and that's when I noticed that it was having problems and upon closer inspection I realized that I've been flirting with disaster for a little while here. Alright, I'm really happy with that. So what I want to do now before I start drilling these rivets out I want to just mark this because I'm going to be using this is the edge of the hinge right here I'm going to be using this piece of wood to lay out my new piece and these are the rivets right here that I'm going to be drilling out there's four of them right here in this ladder on this side and four on this side and then the ladder itself should come free from the hinge once I take some bolts out down here but I'm gonna mark this side also right here now what I want to do is get up there and drill these rivets out I've already drilled a couple that I you couldn't see but if I were to record it anyway and I had to stand on the ladder itself to get up there and do it I couldn't do it off of my six footer so if it crashed down I really didn't want to watch it again on a recording 
I also want to say this video is not sponsored, but if you need a mortgage or refinancing, my son-in-law, Brett Wimmer, is a mortgage broker. He owns Backyard Lending. I'm going to put a cover shot up right now of his information. He is licensed in the state of Michigan only. He can explain to you why it is better off for you to go through a mortgage broker than a bank. Give him a call, give him a chance, he'll do right by you and save you some money. Let's get these rivets drilled. This is going to be a little tough on me because I have two jobs here. I'm the cameraman and the driller. There we go. That is the rivet I want to drill. And it is out. The head of the rivet is kind of stuck on my drill bit. I need to get that off. And then we need to get this one right here as well. So what's going on here is the rivet is spinning. There we go. Now I have one more on the inside. There's two more actually. I have one over here and one over here on this side. I'm not going to be able to record them so I'm going to go ahead and get them drilled out and then this will be just about ready to pop down. With all the rivets drilled out I just want to take a screwdriver and pop the wood loose from the ladder itself. Now it, it's still secured here and here so I'm not worried about it like trying to just pop down but I do want to make sure I get it loose. There we go. Now I need to do the same thing on the other side. It took a minute to get it to go, but it did. So I'm going to get that one. And then we will be ready to get some more of these bolts out. I'm going to take these bolts out right here. There's three on each side holding it to the wood itself. Then I'll drill these rivets once it's down. With all of them drilled out, I'm going to go ahead and pull these insulation panels out of here. Just one less thing I have to deal with. And get these six bolts out. I already have a couple of them out. The wood is free, and there it is, <laughs> easy enough. Now with that wood out of the way, I'm going to be putting this back together with quarter inch bolts where I took these rivets out. So I'm going to just take the opportunity right now to go ahead and make sure all these holes are a quarter inch. And it doesn't take much, they're really close to it. These cylinders that are on here are apparently pretty strong because they're not willing to let me pull this back down where it needs to be to drill those holes. So I am probably going to have to unhook these two cylinders. They're bolted on so it's no big deal. I got a couple more I can drill first. Alright. Side. I've got my horses set up and I've got this old door piece here on the horses. I just want to mark both sides of these and the ends on all three of these pieces. I'm hopeful to use this as a template on top of my new piece and just drill the holes. But if that doesn't 
pan out for some reason, I will be able to pull some measurements or even pull measurements and make sure that I'm located where I need to be. Just going to mark that for the rope. Go ahead and take the rope out of here. Now I'm ready to get these drilled out. I want to hold these with some pliers and not just trust that they won't spin. My hands are plenty out of the way, but you have to be careful when you're drilling stuff like this because if these things start spinning around in circles, they'll get you. So I'm going to go ahead and finish drilling that hole through a quarter inch. There we go. off I should be able to get these out of my way I don't really need to mark these they are all drilled the same we'll be reusing them and we'll go ahead and pull these rivets out of here with this off it's a whole lot easier for me to show you what's going on the wood is just flaking apart there is a little bit of decent structure left in there I mean it's just quarter inch wood it's delaminating not only is it delaminating but it's just split in half all the way through here so it wasn't long at all before this was just going to completely snap off and I was going to be laying on the floor so my shop is still pretty messy I'm still I'm almost done painting I'm really close but I got stuff everywhere this plywood was left over from a past project and I'm half inch which I'm happier about than quarter inch. And I'm thinking that this is gonna be of ample size. Open. Ooh, look at that. It's doggone perfect. All right, I'm gonna knock some dust off, get this up here, and then we'll get those holes marked and drilled. Actually, I think I'm just gonna clamp this on top of that and drill the holes. So I'm going to have to trim this new piece just a tick. It's going to be like a quarter inch on this side and then, you know, that six inches right there. I just want to get this lined up on here real nice and get some clamps on it. This edge is not perfectly square. I'm sticking out about an eighth of an inch or something. So I'm going to slide it over and see if that may be a factory edge or even if I have a factory edge here. 
If not, I might have to square it up. I like that, this edge is feeling a lot better. That's flush all the way down. I check the end. It's flush all the way. I'm good with that. Because this is so degraded right here, I'm just going to put a couple more clamps right there. And I did not wind up having to remove the cylinders from the ladder. I was able to just kind of muscle it down and get it lined up and drill those holes out. Now that it's all clamped, I'm going to go ahead and just mark it for cutting. these existing holes and drill it out also this is my face so that when my drill bit goes through if anything blows out this will be the back side and no one will ever see it holes are drilled I'm going to get this off of here and we are ready to get this one cut and get it back up there I've got my circular saw set at a half inch a little tight here Yeah. <laughs> 
Now I just need to trim it a little bit this way. surface we're going to turn her over set our wooden slats back on here and find some bolts I just dug through my bin of goodies and I found six bolts for these but I do not have the nine bolts that I need for there so I'm going to get these installed and pick those up and that'll be tomorrow. I'm going to use a quarter inch flat washer with each quarter inch bolt. And my bracket. Ooh. These aren't long enough either. All right, we'll have to finish this tomorrow. It's a new day and I've got some bolts that are long enough, so we are ready to go. I wanna bolt these back on here and tighten them up, snug them up, I should say. I don't want these to be flopping around but I want them to be able, I want to be able to move them with my hands if I need to, to get it to line back up on the, on the ladder. So right now, that's not bad. I might just finger tighten them for right now. If I have any misalignments, I will run the drill back through if I need to. I should be okay here though. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do these two and then we're going to get this thing ready to get back up there. I have all my brackets bolted back onto my new piece of wood, but I need to get this lined up. And the problem is, is I did not remove the shocks. I just kind of muscled the ladder down. And that's what I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to run these bolts through the wrong direction for now, just to hold everything in place. Once I get all of the bolts in, then I will take these, run them back out and turn them around and put them in the correct way. do the same thing on this corner this will be a little harder because it's harder for me to see there once I get these and my hinge is bent a little bit I've oiled it twice now so I'm hopeful that it wants to move a little freer I 
and then I'm going to bend this back into place once I get this in. bolt in this side and with it in place this side's about a quarter inch off and I'm not quite understanding even how that can be because the rungs are all riveted together so it's not making a ton of sense to me but I'm gonna go ahead and bend this hinge back straight and then try and get that aligned I'm just gonna use some channel locks to tweak this hinge back into shape it's not that horribly bent out of shape. And the whole reason this happened is like I say that bent free heater created so much moisture in here that it rusted this hinge. and push the screwdriver through even if it's crooked man it's just missing by a mile I think what I'm going to do is take this one back out get this one aligned first this one I can see a lot better and it may be a lot easier for me. managed to get this little screwdriver through the hole which is good getting this one lined up a little bit oh there we go 15 minutes of fighting it and finally got it lined up. It's a good thing. It's still a little bit off right here, but I think that I can tweak that around a little bit, spread it apart, and get this bolt in. There we go. Now, I don't know exactly why that happened. It shouldn't have, but it did. All right, we are ready to get the wood on there. I drilled these holes at exactly a quarter of an inch, which is the same size as the bolt, and it was fighting me. So I went ahead and drilled them the next size up, which is 1764. So now hopefully, they will just slide right on. Once I figure out how to get up here. Oh.
There's a couple of shims here that are sticking down slightly. I need to cut them off. They're in my way. Not anymore. The bolt is partially in the hole, but it pushed back. I got it to come through far enough to get a nut on it. And I'm happy with that. It won't go anywhere. This has proven to be more of a pain than I thought. But it's still not as big of a pain as putting in a new attic door. So with those started, I want to push this into place. Down here. Get these brackets lined up. And get a couple bolts in here to hold everything for me. Okay, with those two in, I'll get the other four after I finish taking care of everything up top. We're going to go back up there and get those in. I want to start with these right here. And I know the alignment's not perfect on them. But I'm hopeful and get it to go in. I'm really struggling to see into this one. I know that I can see that it's off by a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the drill through and get it the best that I can. I know that's close. Okay, that one started. The bolt that goes through the center of the hinge appears to be lined up very well. The hinge is still just a little bit bent and it won't let me get the nut started. So I just want to tap that in down a little bit. This is where patience is a virtue. That 
Well, just enough to let me get that started. Now I need to get these four bolts in, these four lower ones. And because of the hinge, the thickness of the hinge, I need to put a little washer back there between the bracket and the wood to make up the thickness of that hinge just so everything bolts up straight. So once again, things are not lining up exact. So I am going to go ahead and run a drill bit through. They're really close, but not close enough to get the bolt in. So I have the exact same thing going on here. This one's almost lined up perfect. This one's off by half the hole or so. So I'm going to do the same thing here and get them in. Now that I've got everything started, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten all these up before I pull these out and put the bolts in the correct direction. out put them in get them tightened up with all the bolts up there in and tightened I'm ready to go ahead and get these other four bolts in right here and get them tightened down I get this done we'll come back take a look all my bolts are tight last thing I need to do is put this rope back in here and give it a test run Him still isn't super happy. But I think with a little time, just moving it this little bit, it feels better already. The hinge is still binding a little bit. I've played with it for a few minutes and it's almost closing completely now, but there's still a little small gap. I'm convinced in time, once I spray that hinge a couple more times, this will all get better. But now I'm confident that it's not going to fall off and that I'm not going to take express back down to the floor. All right, guys, that's all we got for this time. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those videos that are going to pop up next to me. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you.